We have 18 questions today that were emailed to me by the membership and that, uh, that we used, and I added a few of my own. Uh, the candidates have two minutes on their opening remarks and two minutes on their close. All the questions uh, will have a one, all the other questions will have a one minute time limit, but each candidate has three joker cards uh, to play if they'd like to extend their answer for 30 seconds or comment on the, or disagree with, the answer of their opponent. They only have three cards, so I've warned them to use them judiciously uh, because we don't want to use up your cards in the first five questions, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay. Uh, Lane Wilkerson uh, won the coin toss, and he will go first. Katricia will go second, and then uh, Katricia, uh, the loser of the f first toss, got to choose how she would go first or second in the close. She chose that she would go, go second. So Lane will go first on the close. The first question again was mailed to them a couple of, uh, emailed them a couple, well, two days ago. And here's the question that they get two minutes for. Both of you have served Frankfurt together for almost four years. You know the city. In the next four years of your administration, how are you going to make our capital city thrive through economic development? Lane? All right, thank you all for the opportunity to be here, and thank you, John. And uh, with me as mayor, uh, we're not dealing with hypotheticals on what we'll do in, with an administration. We have actual results that I can show that we have done. I've presided over a city commission that has been the most business friendly and pro growth in memory. I've supported nearly every incentive uh, that's in the toolkit uh, within the state, and that includes not one but two tax increment financing districts to encourage new growth in areas where we don't have any tax revenue. We've approved a KBI incentive to encourage manufacturing and an infill development, and we've approved an industrial revenue bond to encourage new senior housing opportunities. I've worked with our utilities uh, to, and I supported the lowering of our sewer tap-on fees, and I encouraged the Frankfurt Plant Board to reconsider their tariffs so that we can reimburse developers for their electrical infrastructure. Because that's what I was hearing that developers wanted. Uh, everything that's come in front of our commission, I've, I've supported rezoning uh, for other uses. I also am instrumental in the Remote Frankfurt Initiative, which is training remote workers that live here in Frankfurt to do work outside of our community. Uh, we received over $400,000 from Congressman Barr in the form of an earmark to train workers that live here. And I also am the only mayoral candidate that supported increased funding for KCDC this year. And going forward, I would like to see an expanded role for the organization to not only focus on industrial manufacturing, but also small businesses and revitalization of some of our dormant commercial centers, and we need to do more tax incentives to help that. So four years ago, I ran on changing the economic trajectory of our city, and have given four more years. I'm confident that the best is yet to come. Thank you. Katricia? Sure. Um, well, first and foremost, we need to make economic development a, an actual priority and not talk about it, and also not go on the accolades of those in the past. Just because we cut a ribbon during our term does not mean that we ourselves gathered that and actually built it from the ground up. So it's about working together and keeping what has happened in the past moving forward. But also, we need to embrace conducive relationships with stakeholders like yourself and not alienate you because we think that the mayor position is more powerful you than you than anyone in this community. The goal is communication in this community across the board. Also, we need to make decisions and stick to those decisions and not be wavering. 
So yes, we can throw out numbers and we can throw out um, all the numbers of money that came in and things like that. But when it comes down to developers, they want people. They don't want politicians playing games with them. They also don't want politicians rambling numbers off to them and promising them endless dreams that once again, you don't get in the long run and it costs developers money, which they then don't want to come in our community. I say that we get on board with the, the direction that the state's going. The state is thriving right now in economic development. However, Frankfurt, yes, we do have things coming in, but we could be so much further ahead if we jump on board and want to do and do exactly and work with the state and what they're doing. Right now, we're the capital city, and we're still not thriving in that economic development area. Why is that? Why are we not? We, come, we talk about we have these relationships, but yet we're still not on board with the state. Also, we need to go back and look into the uh, regional development plan uh, and being a part of that. I spent almost two years saying, let's get on this regional development plan so other people can be thinking about Frankfurt while we're thinking about Frankfurt, and was told by this mayor, we need to think about ourselves. But then two years later, once you let go of a KCDC director, Terry Bradshaw, then all of a sudden, it's okay to think about regional development. Um, also, you know, we want to give the accolades to those who are here. We also want to make sure that everyone on board knows that they're part of our team and that we're looking forward and moving in the right direction and continuing to support KCDC and not control it. Thank you. We have two bridges down and one to go. The Capitol Avenue Bridge was recently evaluated by structural engineers as fair. The rating was a five out of nine, with nine being the strongest. What steps have been taken by the capital city and the state to expedite a stronger bridge that provides the only link between North Frankfurt and South Frankfurt? Commissioner? Yes. We'll start with you. Okay, great. Um, well, first and foremost, I was on the scene as they were closing the singing bridge. And so being on the scene, asking those important questions, um, found out that one of the beams were actually floating, and that's why no pedestrians are allowed across. Within that conversation, I obtained the in information uh, to call transportation and to ask further into that. That then led me to go over to City Hall that morning and request a full evaluation, the last evaluation of Capitol Bridge, so we know exactly where it's at. So the goal is being proactive and not waiting around for an answer to come down, but be proactive and get in and talk to the people who know. It's very important that when we did talk to the city managers, they did went and met with our police to clear out the homeless underneath of the bridge because one fire, no matter how small or large, will shut down Capitol Avenue. So I think in that I was being very progressive and being able to move forward to make sure that bridge is protected in all that we do and stay communicating with our Kentucky Transportation as well as our city managers. Lane, same question. Uh, no. First thing we need to do is get the singing bridge back in operation and the city was way ahead of this last year because we understand how critical the bridge is to our downtown navigation and flow. We reached out to the state because we had identified the federal bridge investment program as an opportunity to increase the weight limit on the bridge and extend its lifespan. So we reached out to the state expressed our interest in applying for this grant with their support and they wholeheartedly gave it. And we now have an application in that was submitted in March, well, well in advance of the bridge's closing to secure the funding to make this bridge uh, last for decades to come. A week before the bridge was closed, we met with Senator McConnell's office at City Hall and walked them over to show them the reason that we need the funding. We have since received word from Congressman Comer that he's put in a good word. We expect to hear results at the end of this month to see what status of that grant is, but we're confident we're going to get the funding to fix the bridge. The next question goes to Lane. When was the last time, let me back up, We've just come off of Bourbon on the Banks, which was a tremendous success. But when was the last time that the city reached out to Buffalo Trace and Jim Bream to establish a relationship that would benefit both the distilleries and Frankfurt as a whole? Uh, the last time was within the last six weeks. Uh, Judge Moeller, Penny Peebler, myself, we paid a visit to Buffalo Trace, met with the local leaders, including Harlan Wheatley, Barry Kaderi, and Tyler Adams to discuss what their plans were for the future. 
and to let them know what the city's plans are because everything we do needs to complement what they're doing. They have a world-class distillery just down the road. We need to make a world-class riverfront and tourism corridor to complement what they're doing. And to that end, uh, I've appointed the operations manager here in Frankfurt, Tyler Adams, to our cities, to the Tourism Commission, because we want to know what they're doing. They need to know what we're doing. Everything we do needs to be hand in hand, and we look forward to doing all we can to improve not only the city of Frankfurt, but our relationship with Buffalo Trace. Patricia. Well, I'm just sort of odd because once again, I'll start off with, I've met with um, Jim Bean through um, KCDC um, when Terry Bradshaw was here and going to their events and talking with them as well as Buffalo Trace. But I'm sort of in awe because here we have a mayor and a city commissioner and I was totally unaware that Mitch McConnell was in town and had communications with the city. I'm totally aware that he has had, nor do I believe that he has had all of these meetings all of a sudden and no one at the city is even aware of it. Once again, poor leadership. We are, we are a commission of five a mayor and four commissioners. In order for me to be the best commissioner, I need follow-up in what's called mayor updates. He's not given one mayor update yet this in four years to let us know what he's doing, when he's doing it, and if it's personal or if it's actually for the city. So back to Buffalo Trace and Jim Bean, yes, they are catalysts here. However, this mayor never ever stood up to say that he supported any of the barns that was coming in to help have relationships with Buffalo Trace, to me it's more of a personal thing. I don't need to have lunch with people just to have relationships. It's about building and wanting. We can't say that we want Buffalo Trace to help us with a pool if we're not willing to bring in barns and support them and speak out about it, not days after the newspaper comes in and then you want to write a statement. It's about standing with them and for them. Uh, Patricia. How would you encourage development in vacant properties downtown, on the east side, on the west side of Frankfurt? Well, I think that that leads back to working together. Um, what I've been doing is taking a lot of information from the businesses downtown and also working with Eric um, Cockley, who is in um, planning and zoning. Um, the reason why we're looking into dilapidated properties is because many years ago when I was at KLC, Covington was doing such a great job. That conversation started, and Eric is finally, within the last couple of years, getting the dilapidated properties moving in the right direction so we can get them into the hands of developers, whether that is for businesses or whether that's for um, affordable housing. Um, but the goal is knowing where for us to focus on different areas. If Main, East Main Street is going to be a focus area, let's focus on it, let's put the money there, let's get it up to par, and let's move to the next location. We're like marbles on a table right now with no planning for this community and the direction we want to go or what areas we want to actually develop. Lane? All right, first I'd like to address uh, the, the fact that you know, other elected officials or business leaders or developers want to meet with the mayor it should come as no surprise. I'm not going to apologize for holding meetings with people I'm supposed to meet with, and that's what you all in this room and, and at home would expect from a mayor. And second, uh, as far as the Buffalo Trace, I, I did a, a, an editorial along with Judge Wells. It was a joint editorial in support of the project in Peaks Mill. Having said that, uh, for the development on the east-west side, if you're talking about the dormant commercial centers, we need to offer tax incentives to those property owners so that we can rebate either occupational tax or property tax to encourage the development. And we need to do our part as a city to continue to invest in infrastructure to make these properties more valuable so that it would be unfeasible to not develop these properties. Downtown, I'm a business owner downtown. My wife has a business downtown. We need to encourage rent subsidies for targeted businesses working with DFI to make sure we get businesses that complement the ones that are already here. Next question, Lane. Um, how often, She's got a call. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, yes, I wanted to add. I didn't see it. That's okay. <laughs> I can do 30 seconds on him. Just 30 okay. seconds. Um, it's not the point that do you not want to apologize for meeting. It's the point that you don't bring the information back for us to be a cohesive board and for the community to know what you're doing. There's a lot of things that you do in this community when the mayor goes out and says he's meeting. It's personal. He's offered things to developers who have put developers in a bad bind, just with the hotel on Washington Street. $750,000 grant was promised to them. They hired an attorney, they hired a grants person, then turned around and they weren't even qualified for the grant. So within that, that's the issues that I have when you meet without coming back to let us know what's going on. I'm not sure if you're running for mayor or your wife. 
Lane, you have 30 seconds. It should also come as no surprise of the personal attacks uh, in this forum. But I will say to the developers on Washington Street, we I identified a National Park Service grant and brought it to the attention of staff and the developers and said this could be an opportunity if we apply for it. We applied for it. We were fortunate to get the grant. Unfortunately, the developer was already far ahead of schedule and it didn't qualify anymore. So again, I'm not going to apologize for identifying a grant opportunity and helping the developer go get it, which is what we did. The next question goes to Lane. How often will you meet with existing industries regarding their wants and needs, maybe in a round table luncheon, something like that? This is something that uh, I wouldn't want to get started going forward uh, to form a, a council of not just myself, but the judge executive as well. And we've already uh, made steps to do that. And, and, and part of it is working with our local economic development agency to make sure that we're included. Because as I said with Buffalo Trace, city of Frankfurt is open for business. And we, we do want to encourage growth again. What's good for local businesses is good for the city. And I understand that as a business owner. So it's something that we need to do more of and also to make sure that we continue the pro-growth mindset which I bring to the table. Could you repeat the question? Sure. Thank you. How often will you meet with existing industries regarding their wants and needs? Perhaps maybe a round table luncheon. Um, well, I already do that. I meet with business leaders and I meet with organizations now. And as I've stated since the first day that I um, wanted to become uh, run for this mayor position, that I would start a mayor advisory council and put those people on it. So it's really surprising to me that we've had a mayor be in for four years and he hasn't thought about that now until I've been speaking about it in all of my forums that I've had. So I hope that you know I've, I can make him be a better mayor in the next couple of months in finishing out his term. But for one thing that I'm doing, I will continue to meet with you because when I get into a room, your knowledge, it excites me. Your, not, your knowledge drives Frankfurt. It doesn't intimidate me. And so when people get into certain rooms with certain leaders and they say certain things, it intimidates them. It makes them make wrong decisions or want to run away from that. And I'm not running away from growth. I'm not running away from hard decisions. I'm not running for things that I may not know everything about. I'm willing to learn as to why I'm continuing to go through KLC at a level three city official at this time and head it to the mastery level because I want to know all the things and all the knowledge that I can to make Frankfurt better and to work with each and one of you as stakeholders. Patricia. Uh, uh, what are your specific plans to develop more housing options in Frankfurt, and how would you incentivize such projects? Well, that sort of answers that. It's incentivize, incentivize, incentivize. And so one property that I've been looking at since 2019 of coming in, uh, once we obtained the Schinkel Lane property, was what my vision was, was housing. Uh, on the edge of Schinkel Lane right past the church. So once we finish sewer, my goal is to continue to push that. I brought that up in our meeting for housing to put affordable housing there, whether that's single family dwellings and also units, but also including uh, a portion or percentage of that for veterans as well. So my goal is to continue also with the dilapidated properties and putting them hands into developers that can make homes or housing there, but continuing to push incentives. So making property build ready for developers and taking a, a control of our assets, our sewer and our utilities, those are assets and being able to put that, that turns on the lights for developers and moves people forward. So continuing to be welcoming and opening with developers to be able to move that forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Lane, what are your specific plans and how would you incentivize such projects? Well, one of, well, a couple of the things that we've already done, making the investments that we did where the parcels are and where the new paddocks development is going, working with the state and the federal partners, we're going to see new housing units be built in those areas. Sometimes the government, city government, has to be the first investor to make sure these projects get kick-started. And we're going to start seeing that downtown. We're going to start seeing it out behind the Franklin Square. We're going to see a whole new road system built back there to enable growth. And beyond that, I'm on the housing authority of Frankfurt. We are uh, evaluating the, uh, the process of building new units, which we're able to do. And the city has formed an affordable housing committee. We've hired a consultant to help us do an RFP so that we can build 
uh, more affordable housing units and units for the housing authority, that should take some pressure off of our housing inventory now. Lane, um, what do you, do you support mixed use development projects and how can you encourage them? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think this is something that we're, and we're showing it with downtown. That is an entirely new, uh, it's a mixed use urban development. You're going to see uh, multiple types of businesses there. I think more of a, uh, instead of you know, putting different, certain types of businesses in one area and then the housing in another, we can have it all in the same area. I also support this for the properties we've already talked about, and that is on the, where the dormant commercial centers are, let's say Century Plaza or the old Sears or the old Hex. Those are prime for this type of development, mixed use, similar to uh, what you would see in Louisville, like Norton Commons, maybe not as large, but that's the type of uh, uh, projects we need to encourage and incentivize with tax incentives that I've already mentioned. Patricia, do you support mixed use development projects and how can you encourage them? Yes, I definitely um, support and encourage. Um, as the mayor stated, um, that's one thing that I've done research on in Louisville. And Louisville has many small areas and sectors of mixed use that is work, live, and play in all in one area. And that's what more people are looking at. It keeps, it keeps cars off of the road from wear and tear, and it keeps families and, and businesses more closer. So yes, I do support that. I support it in our downtown right now where the OYMCA is being demolished, and I also support that use on um, parcels B and C. Um, I think in due time, we can look at the paddocks to say that there would be housing um, over there, the, being that we have moved that road project forward, but I think that that will be years to come, and by then I think we may be moved on to another area uh, of what we're looking forward to moving Frankfurt forward, but yes, I think it's, it's adamant, and I think more people are looking for that because more people are wanting a metro feel, but staying in the small, quaint, historical area of Frankfurt. Thank you. Patricia, uh, are you in favor of greater zoning flexibility that can lead to more development, business success, and a broadened tax base? Yes. Yes, I would say so. And I think a lot of times, even dealing with our comp plan right now that I do not quite agree with, I think that even in that, it's literally saying that we're going to have to go through zoning. If we can just be forward thinking and proactive and go ahead and start zoning areas that we want housing or we want businesses in, we can be ahead of the eight ball. And still, we wait and we wait and we wait for a developer and we beg a developer and then we have broken relationships and then we're fighting over it in committees the whole entire time. So for me, Yes, we need to be proactive in that, and the city can do that through our comp plan if we would just sit down, look at these maps, and truly key in on the areas that we want growth as far as business areas, home areas, mixed-use areas across the board. So I think zoning needs to be in the forefront of moving economic development uh, forward into wanting to bring develop developers in. Lane, are you in favor of greater zoning flexibility that can lead to more development, business success, and a broadened tax base? Yes, and, uh, and, I, and the sooner we get through the comprehensive plan process, the sooner that can begin because the next step of the comprehensive plan process is to rewrite the zoning codes. And I'm in favor of uh, something more form-based where uh, we're not uh, constrained so much, where we can remove some minimums, where we can have accessory dwelling units and have higher density residential, particularly downtown, where we need more critical mass. So yes, I'm in favor of more mixed use. And again, we've already supported uh, something like that in the downtown area. And I'm confident that that's going to be successful. So uh, yes, anything that's going to increase more tax base and give us uh, make things happen faster, I'm in favor of. All right. This question came from several different members. Uh, and it was important to, for economic development and the health of the community. Lane, please explain and assess our sewer rates, the current state of the plant, sewer plant, the consent decree, and the status of replacing sewage treatment plants, extending, to, extending and extending sewers to residents of Farmdale, Edgewood, Meadowbrook Lane, Coolbrook, and Schofield Lane. Okay. So, uh, 
the status of the wastewater treatment plant, we are in the process of expanding the capacity to double the size. Of course, we are subject to a consent decree and everything that we're doing right now in the next couple of years is gonna to be to help satisfy that, to make sure we uh, get that off of our back. Uh, we are in the process, if you've noticed, on the Schenkel Lane property, uh, a major construction project going on, that's the East Frankfurt Interceptor. Uh, we have uh, in the, somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 million, 100 million dollars worth of sewer projects coming in the next couple of years. So sewers front and center, uh, we are considering the rates right now. We haven't raised rates in a while. They're, they were subject to an automatic cost of living adjustment, and that was uh, put on hold about five or six years ago. But we are uh, uh, working toward that. And as far as taking on new, we, we are in the process of working with the other package plans. But again, these are the, you know, we're talking about working with neighborhoods that are outside the city limits, and we need to keep that in mind. The sewer supported uh, development outside the city limits for a long time. Thank you. Patricia? Yes. Um, so yes, with the r sewer rates, they have not been changed in a while, um, but um, in, on the committee that we have right now with the finance committee in the last meeting we have, those rates, there will be fees that will be assessed for these particular sewer rates um, that will be increased in the next 2025 and 2026 years. However, the next meeting for those rates will be on November 19th after Election Day. So those rates are coming um, as far as fees are concerned. Um, yes, the consent for decree, um, we've spoken, I've spoken um, with um, our director over there, Kenny Hoxton, I have a really good relationship with him and I've sat down with him many a times and looking and actually going through and looking at our areas where our sewer plan is. It does need a lot of upgrades and it is one of the most expensive areas that we have that's running in this community. Um, but we are looking to expand right now. And as the mayor stated, yes, we do have sewer. And as it leaves the city, we need to make sure that we are being reimbursed for that and making sure we're able to pay for that um, going out to those areas as well well as the fees um, that they that they pay should be more than city residents. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Patricia, uh, in your four-year term, yes. will you create a city-county committee to study merging city and county government? Um, I don't know if a committee really needs to be made. I think we're committed out. Um, but I do think that it's um, something that we could communicate with. I think there's a lot of areas right now that the city and the county duplicate, just like parks. I asked in 2019 for our park system to be um, combined because they only have one park system, but that didn't happen. So the goal is to be able to communicate consistently. We, um, myself and Kyle Thompson, have asked for meetings with the county so we can start these conversations and have that communication with city and county. And in four years, we've only met with them one time. And yet, we're still waiting on a city county meeting so I will make sure that that is a priority that we can at least have quarterly meetings or at least two meetings a year where we can communicate back and forth to see what's best for Frankfurt I don't want to rush in any direction of merged government or a mayor in government I want to see what we have and see if it works now with our two city managers moving our city in the right right direction working with city county and state officials uh, Lane, in your four-year term, would you uh, create a city-county committee to study merging city and county government? I don't, I don't think it's likely I would do that in the next four years because I think within four years, there's a lot we can do working with the county to share services and put things together that does not involve merging our governments and, and expending all the energy that that would take, whether it be creating a one-stop shop for planning and zoning so that it's easier to get permitting and prevent unnecessary delays for business owners and developers. Those are talks that I have regularly with the judge executive. We meet on a regular basis, and, and although we have, we have had a couple of meetings uh, with the county uh, since I've been mayor, and, and in both instances we've had uh, a commissioner uh, you know, uh, attack the other the other side, either whether it's a public official or the fiscal court, and not surprisingly, there's an unwillingness to go through that again. So in the meantime, I'll continue to meet with the judge regularly, and uh, I'm confident that there'll be good results from that. Thank you. This next question kind of dovetails with the discussion. After quality education resources, 
the second most important item industry le leaders look at is quality of leisure activities. Wouldn't it be cost effective if the city and county combined parks and recreation departments? Savings could be made in purchasing grass seed, fertilizer, go-karts, equipment, and so forth. Do you support such a move, Lane? Yes, and in, in this regard, you don't have to convince me. I'm in favor of it, and this is an area where working with the county, I hope that we can make some progress. Uh, just for an example, uh, we, we did our own parks master plan uh, that we adopted since I've been mayor, and the county did a Lakeview Park master plan. And we both spent over $100,000 on studies, and, and it would have been nice to have that as one cohesive plan. But we're working with them to make sure anything we do within the city complements what they're doing at Lakeview and vice versa. So I understand, and I think uh, we, we've had a meeting about this, and I think if you ask both of our parks directors, they're probably in favor of that too, because that's what other surrounding counties do. I think it makes a lot of sense, and that's one area I think we can work toward that does not involve merger. Patricia, after quality education resources, the second most important industry leaders look at is quality leisure activities. Wouldn't it be cost effective if city and county combined parks and recreation departments? Savings could be made in purchasing grass seed, fertilizer, golf carts, equipment. Do you support such a move? I definitely support a move. I've made this suggestion several times uh, and it continues to go overlooked. Um, and I think also um, back to, uh, as the mayor shared, um, we did do a master plan. Our master plan was roughly around $250,000. The county's master plan for one park was about one hundred seventy-five, one hundred seventy-five thousand. dollars And so to me, it's a waste of money. If you had added one park, it may have added twenty, thirty thousand, 30000 maybe onto it, um, onto our amount. So yes, we are wasting money. Um, I think people are worried about jobs. And I think with jobs, our parks, we have so many parks that those people will have places to work in our park system to be able to keep our parks up and moving and being able to allow such a great quality of life for our community. I think this will help keep the update of our parks. Right now, the city parks are so far behind that now it's going to take millions and millions of dollars to get us updated and moving in the right direction. So I think allowing that one park to come together only makes sense. Thank you. Yes. Patricia, this is another question that was submitted by multiple members of our group. Sure. There are many non-residents who own property within the city limits, mm -hmm. but have no vote in local elections or how their property is affected by city actions. Mm -hmm. it's, pl it's plain taxation without representation. Would you favor extending voting rights to these property owners? Um, I would say that that would be a conversation that we would have to have with Secretary of State on what those regulations are because when people vote, they're voting to where their home is and that's just what it's connected to now. I do think it's unfair that they really don't have a say in the leaders um, that are representing them with their businesses um, because there are things that they don't like or things that they want to improve. But one thing that I do as a city commissioner is I meet with business leaders across our whole entire community on a regular basis and a lot of them have my personal number and any issues that they have or any issues that they want to foresee come to the city commission, I bring those there. Also, to continue to be inviting for them to let them know, even though you don't have a vote for our seats, you do have a voice in the community, and you're welcome to our city commission meetings at any time during citizen comments or to come in and sit down with us to let us know what your issues are to be heard. I tell everyone, send us all an email, hold, it us, hold us accountable so we are following up on the issues that matter to you and to take action on those issues. Lane? I'm not sure it's even possible to, to vote in a jurisdiction where you don't live. So I'm not sure, I don't know if there's anything we can do about that as a city commission. But I would say, you know, we're, the city of Frankfurt's open uh, for business. You're welcome to move into the city limits. And uh, if you would like us to extend city limits to where you live, we, we could do that as well. Because, you know, I, I, the one thing I can do is when, when possible, I can uh, use the power of appointment to the boards and commissions. Now, most times state statute says that that, board, uh, that appointment has to be a city resident. 
And so I am limited on who uh, that person can be. But there are a couple of instances where it can be somebody outside of the jurisdiction. And I give that heavy consideration to make sure that we do include voices of people that not only uh, don't live in the city, but maybe uh, work outside of the city or county as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, Lane, you mentioned this before in your remarks, a one-stop shop for dealing with city, county, planning and zoning and permitting. It would be helpful to individual citizens as well as it could be helpful in dealing with real estate. Do you support a move of combining planning and zoning committees or, or departments of city and county? Yes, to an extent, at the very least, I think we need to have both uh, departments, both the city and the county, in the same building. You know, whether or not we actually put them together, I think, at this point, is immaterial. I think we just need to have them in the same place. That way, uh, business owners, uh, new developers, anybody looking for a permit just goes to one building, and it's easy to get around. They don't need to know who works for the city or for the county. They just need to know where that, you know, is it just down the hall or not? I think that is uh, some, it's something I'm in support of. We're actually... I've, I've talked to the judge about it. We're, we're, we're trying to identify a good, appropriate property now, not to speak for him, but it is something that we're looking at, and I hope in the next year that's something we'll be able to come back and say we delivered on this because I know it was one of the recommendations of the DIG meeting last year, and that's something we're going to be able to check off soon, I hope. Katricia, do you support a one-stop shop for dealing with city, county, planning and zoning and permitting. Would it be helpful to it would be helpful to individual citizens as well as real estate people? Yes, I do support this and I have brought this up several times. I've asked, actually asked for an update on where we are with the county and working on this and it has then not been put on our agenda in the last month and a half. Uh, so I'm hoping that maybe we can have an update since it shares that the mayor supports it. So hopefully it'll, we can have a good update on that. Yes, I've spoken with the judge on this. I've spoken with our city managers on that. We have looked at different buildings across this community as well as there's talk that, you know, some renovations going on at, over in the county court area that maybe that could be a possibility for us to move there or somewhere here locally. Do I think combining them right now is a good idea? I don't. I think that they have different rules and regulations in their areas, but I think putting them in the same building for a one-stop shop to cut out all the controversy or going from one side of the river to the other and not knowing who to choose, having them in one place allows for things to go more smoothly and for people to feel more comfortable that we're here for, their, for them to succeed, and we want them to succeed when we offer it in one place. Thank you. Yes. Katricia, would you appoint a DIG member to the Planning and Zoning Commission in your four-year term? Um, you know, I, I don't see why not. Um, I think that all of you as stakeholders have taken your personal time out, and it really speaks volumes. I haven't seen any reason why you can't be represented on that um, committee. Um, know that my board appointments are not going to be personal and know that my board appointment appointments will not be one that I try to control as well. I want people on the board who know what they're doing, who know things that I don't know so they can make the best decisions for Frankfurt moving forward. This is not about power. This is about moving Frankfurt forward and making sure the right people are in the right places to make those ideas uh, happen and come to fruition for Frankfurt. If I'm not knowing, I'm not intimidated by you, I'm encouraged by you and your information and you need to be on these boards. Lane, would you uh, appoint a DIG member to the Planning and Zoning Commission in your four-year term? Well, I, it's something I've, I have attempted to do in my previous four years. I've actually offered a board appointment to two DIG members in the last four years. They're not here in this room right now, but it's something that has been offered. So the answer is yes. And uh, I'm looking around the room, too, and keep in mind, this has to be a city resident. And looking around the room, I'm not sure how many in here actually live in the city. There's a couple, but there's not many. So keep that in mind. I am limited on my board appointments, but I have offered it a couple of times, and they were both declined. Thank you. Lane, here's another question. Um, will you appoint a DIG member to the Architectural Review Board in your four-year term? 
Yeah, well, I'm not sure the, the current membership of DIG, but uh, yes, I have an opening right now. It has to be a board of realtors or a adjacent uh, person um, because I elevated uh, Irma Johnson from ARB to the Planning Commission, and now we have an opening. But it's something. I, it's not something I would. Uh, it's not a disqualifier to be a member of DIG, and it's something I would I would give uh, weight to. But I just want to put the best person on there, on any of these boards, where it's unassailable, that people cannot say that they're unprepared, they don't know what they're talking about, and that, they, uh, that they're fair and objective. That's the main con uh, characteristic I'm looking for in any appointment. Patricia, would you appoint a DIG member to the Architectural Review Board in your four-year term? Um. Well, I look forward to doing it in the next couple of months since he's saying that he's up for it. I say put a name for it and bring it forward by the end of the year and I can do it while I'm still city commissioner. I don't like pushing things off that we can take care of and today we have two meetings coming up this month, two meetings in November and two meetings in December. So why wait for a four year period for the next mayor for myself to take seat when we can do it now? Thank you. Patricia, would you uh, I'm sorry, will you appoint a DIG member to the KCDC? Oh, there's a whole lot of work we need to do with KCDC than just one DIG member on it. But yes, I do think that um, whether that's DIG, um, whether that's a DIG member or someone that the DIG member supports, I think that we need to think through our KCDC board. Uh, we need to use our KCDC board for what it's supposed to be for and not a controlling mechanism when you're not in the room to get your own ideas across. We have to understand that we're the voice of the people and we're the voice of the stakeholders. And if I use something personally or try to control, it's not right. And so when I go into these meetings with KCDC, I see a very engaged, uh, a non-engaged mayor um, on his phone with his legs crossed. Why? Because the agenda has already been set for the person and the people at the table to move forward. So for me, it's not a trustworthy right now KCDC area. Um, for me, I just think that it needs to be revamped. If a board can pass the time of a, uh, of a director and say that she can um, have overtime and do that and then get rid of it, I think the whole board needs to be dismayed if you, get dis if you leave the director. I think everyone needs to start all back over from scratch. Lane, would you appoint a DIG member to the KCDC board? Well, it's, it's something I would consider. I, uh, the outgoing, uh, uh, someone who just resigned uh, was a DIG member at, at one time, or maybe still is, so uh, I have before. I can't imagine I, I, why well, I wouldn't do it again. But again, I'm going to try to get the best person and the best fit for that board at that time to complement the expertise that's already there. You know, we want different skill sets on this board. We want different... Uh, areas of expertise and we want uh, people with different uh, relationship skills to make sure that this is all a cohesive unit and I would say to the point of revamping it I mean this is set by state statute the board makeup is what it is there's three appointees by the mayor three appointees by the judge the city actually passed an ordinance a couple of years ago to add a seventh board member uh, in partnership with the county and that hasn't been taken up by the county yet, but that would have helped, I think, added more expertise. But again, I will select the best person that lives within the city. Thank you. Okay. This is kind of every elected official's dream. If you received a million dollar, five million dollar grant to use for the city any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Lane? Well, notwithstanding, we've already got funding committed for a couple of projects already um, in the works. But if I had $5 million, uh, I would split it among a couple of things. One, of course, indoor aquatic wellness center. We have to get that off the ground and then uh, more housing. That's the, in, in terms of issues that we're going to be facing in the next two years, that's, we have to get those started right away. Uh, other projects, we've got, we, we've got funding identified, convention center, uh, et cetera, but those are the uh, two projects, indoor aquatic center and wellness center, YMCA if you will, hopefully they'll manage it, and affordable housing. Patricia, if you received $5 million, uh, $5 million grant to use any way you wanted, 
what would you do with it and why? Well, I think we have to understand that it's $5 million. So the $5 million allows for projects to be checked off now, not starting big aquatic centers that take $35 million. You can't get that done with $5 million. But we can, however, put that into parks. One million could go toward the KSU pool. We could have that pool up and running by November. The other four million can be put down for um, incentives for downtown businesses um, and storefronts right now, uh, if I had it, to be able to give out small grants to small businesses and to help keep them moving in the right direction direction for their store. Also, it would be our parks. Marking off a ton of things right now in our parks, we're so far behind that parks also helps with the quality of life and also allows our community to come together as one community in one place to have fun, being able to live, work, and play. So that would be some of my main goals. And then other incentives would be um, trying to get the Main Street um, program in Frankfurt. We're one of two capital cities that do not have the Main Street here in Frankfurt to take care of our capital city. I'd want to put money toward that. Thank you. Katricia, what are three reasons why we should vote for you instead of your opponent? Well, three reasons. First reason would be experience. I have six years of experience in this city commission, four of which are um, mayor pro tem, two of which I helped get this mayor off his feet and running and helping him get acclimated with the city government. So I think I've done an okay job uh, in, in, in my area of city commission. But also, I've trained. I'm a level three city commissioner. I've been to trainings all over Kentucky for KLC to be the best commissioner that I can be. Also, engagement and experience with you, the stakeholders and people. I'm always boots on the ground. It was said that showing up is not important as other things. Well, showing up is 90% of it. And I show up, I get to know you so I can make the best decisions for you because I'm your voice. If I don't show up and get to know you, I'm making decisions based on me and me only. And that's not what this position as mayor or city commissioner does. Also, feasibility of all of our budget making sure we're spending money where we need to spend money and that we have a five-year projection plan to keep account of where our expenses are going along with the revenue coming in, which we do not have and we haven't had for four years since Keith Parker left. Lane, what are your three reasons why we should vote for you? Well, one, one, I understand now and actually have experience being mayor and I understand how to represent this city as a mayor. And, and building, and another reason is the strong relationships I've built already at all levels of government, local, state, executive branch, legislative branch, and at the federal level as well. Those relationships are gonna, well, we're starting to see, we've laid a foundation, and we're starting to see the dividends already come from those relationships. We've secured tens of millions of dollars in state and federal funds for our city just since I've been mayor. And then third, I, my financial expertise. You know, I am uh, someone knowledgeable in all you know, investments, financial planning. I have a master's degree in financial planning, and I have a public leadership credential from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, and I also serve on the KLC board and, and have the same you know, credentials uh, going to the, the, the meetings that Commissioner Waldridge does. So I think that serves me well going forward, and we're well positioned. Thank you. Now we'll um, now we'll end uh, end the meeting with a two minute close. Yes. One of my cards. You want to use one of your cards? Sure. Yes, if you don't mind, that would be great. Okay, great. Um, I also want to add that. Uh, the difference between city manager ran government and a mayor ran government is really cosmetic. Um, when we say that he's been mayor for four years, it's the same position I hold. All he does is sign his name when three people say that he can sign his name. He reads an oath of office off of a piece of paper, and he also appoints two members. He also runs our meetings, which we see that there's still a struggle at running meetings sometimes in our city government. So I think that I can handle all of those issues and be a great mayor. Thank you. We'll now enter. Do you have another card? Yes, go ahead. Well, I think the notion that uh, being mayor is just as, as simple as being a commissioner, I, I hope you find that as preposterous as I do because it is a separate election. That's why it's a four-year term. There are other responsibilities to being mayor, and uh, Commissioner Waters clearly doesn't understand the work that goes in to being a mayor. If, if you could say that it's just the same thing because it's not. As I said earlier, the people, developers, local officials, they want to meet with me. The time I spend being mayor. And also, well, I'm out of time. Thank you.
That's it. Thank you, Greg. Patricia? Yes. I can use my 30 you seconds. You can use. Oh, wonderful. Uh, now, let me, let me say, uh, both of you have one card left mm -hmm. at least, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll, we're going after this, we'll let you respond, Patricia. Sure. Uh, but then we'll go into uh, the two minute close. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll go into the two minute close and allow you to go two and a half minutes each. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, two and a half minutes. Okay. Got that timer? Two, two and a half minutes each for the close. But first, Patricia wanted to respond, I believe. Go ahead. Yes, I would like to say that also in mayor, it takes integrity. And integrity is exactly what you do when the, the door is closed and behind closed doors. That's not been happening in this particular commission. Um, strong relationships, I have just as much strong relationships that he does. I've met with all the people from Mitch McConnell all the way down to the governor, to legislators and senators. Yes, I may not take pictures with them all the time for you to see that I've been in their offices, but I have. I met with Senator Thayer just literally a few, about three or four weeks ago to discuss starting legislation for this capital city to move it forward. By a flip of the coin uh, as to who went uh, last in uh, this final uh, uh, close, uh, Patricia won and cho chose to go last, so therefore Lane will go first on a two and a half minute close. All right, then thank you to Dig and for everyone here for the opportunity to share my vision for economic development here in the capital city. Not only am I here as your mayor, I'm here as an owner of a successful downtown business, as a husband of a business owner, as a developer has rehabbed multiple properties and recruited th thriving businesses to fill once vacant storefronts. I proudly pay real occupational and net profit taxes to the city of Frankfurt. I've gone in front of the ARB. I've borrowed from uh, several of your banks. And I finished projects when appraisals weren't so high as they are now. And I'm an investor in this city who's literally all in on the future of Frankfurt. I'm proud of the momentum we have developed over this first term of mine. People throughout the state and the country are taking note of what we're doing here in Frankfurt. We've seen a remarkable amount of private investment flow into our community, and the city is doing its part to bolster that private investment with significant public investments of our own. And now more than ever, we need stability and relationships. I'm a mayor who's demonstrated my ability to work with others to advance Frankfurt's development. And because of these close working relationships I've developed at the state, federal, and local levels, Frankfurt's in a position where it can thrive. We built a solid foundation for the future, and it's, as I said before, only beginning to pay the dividends. Looking ahead, we realistically have over $300 million that's gonna flow into our community. Frankfurt's at a tipping point right now, but our future success is not guaranteed. Right now, we need a proven leader going forward, someone who has experience not only being mayor, but representing our city as mayor. We need a mayor with financial expertise, strong relationships, the discipline, and the patience to see these transformative projects through to the end. That mayor is me, and today I ask for your vote. Together, we can ensure that Frankfurt not only continues to thrive, but that this growth accelerates. I'll just stand by saying, Frankfurt, we are just getting started and the best is yet to come. Thank you. Patricia. Okay, thank you. First and foremost, thank you, um, Dig, for hosting. And however, most importantly, thank you for taking your personal time and coming together for the advancement of Frankfurt. To give your personal time and energy, it truly speaks volumes. Know that through my leadership as mayor, I will work with you address your issues and concerns, and respect your ideas for Frankfurt's growth while moving us forward. With my first move as mayor and the advisory board, this will allow community engagement, transparency, and city decisions and board appointments. Having a DIG member is critical, as well as business owners, residents, and organizations, et cetera, across our community. I have heard you loud and clear. Growth is needed for our city to survive. 
Frankfurt, I have worked hard and dedicated many hours to the craft of city commissioner and completed level three city official training. I have prepared myself and Frankfurt has helped prepare me for the most important moment and to be your voice as mayor. I now ask for your support and I ask for you to vote to continue my service as your mayor. I am a team Frankfurt. This decision is less about me and more about leading Frankfurt forward in the right direction. I will continue my partnership to continue to bring in businesses, housing, recreational spaces, and set a stage for a healthy and thriving Frankfurt. I'm running for mayor, not power. Any power afforded to me will be used for the advancement of our city where, we, where you and taxpayers reap the benefits. A vote for Katricia is a vote for Frankfurt, and most importantly, it's a vote for you. You deserve a mayor who is consistent, loyal, transparent, and strong across the board. One who will see the finish line and push forward during hard times. One with integrity, that's me. I ask for your vote on November 5th as your mayor on the, on number one, on the mayor ballot, <laughs> number one on the mayor ballot. Um, and I really want to be your mayor. I wanna be a mayor with you and with this community because we are stronger together. Team Frankfurt is the focus, is the vision, and is the destination for us to be an unforgettable city. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the DIG membership for their participation in helping to form the uh, questions uh, to, to, for our panel. Uh, I'm grateful to the Whitaker Bank for the place. I'm grateful to Cable 10, who is going to run this forum several times before the election. I'm grateful to the State Journal and all of you who have participated. Thank you and good night.